is the 5-liter Coyote V8 engine in the F-150s the best engine in the 1500 truck segment? Well, I'm going to tell you what I think as a heavy-duty diesel mechanic. Welcome back to the channel, guys. I often get asked, or at least there's comments asking, what is the number one pickup truck engine in the 1500 segment? And I'm gonna try to answer that as best as I can today because I think the five liter Coyote engine would be my number one recommendation. And I'll give you five reasons as to why, as well as taking a deep dive into my theory as to why this engine is the number one. Now, just before we jump into the video, um, this morning I picked up this beautiful trailer behind me. It's the new trailer on the channel. And uh, we're gonna be towing most of the 1500s with this. Lots of wind resistance, maximum wind resistance, and hopefully that's gonna really help separate engine to engine, um, even more so than what we're doing already. So I'm excited about that. I'm also gonna be introducing a new scoring system just to once again, really try and separate engine to engine advantages versus disadvantages um, and make it even clear to you guys which engines just perform better on my towing loop. So look forward to that. Over the past year, I've had a chance to review, drive and tow with a ton of different trucks and engine combinations. And quite frankly, to my surprise, this five liter and this F-150 are my favorite combo up to this point. Now, granted, I still haven't reviewed a couple of engines like the Toyota, as well as the 2.7 liter EcoBoost in this F-150 as well. But I still think this five liter would be my number one choice. The number one reason why this engine is my top pick stems down to reliability. And I think that speaks volumes because in 2011, when this engine was released, critics were saying, this is a performance-based engine, it's too complex, it'll never survive the duty cycles or the wear of a pickup truck use application. And well, turns out, this five liter is a pretty tough little beast. Now, this engine is not perfect by any means, nor are there things that don't concern me, but since this engine came out in 2011, I think Ford's done a really good job kind of ironing out issues along the way. For example, timing chain failures were a big issue when this engine first came out, that's been resolved. Connecting rod bearing failures, that's been resolved. Head gasket leaks, that's been resolved. Um, so I think Ford's done a really nice job addressing issues as they popped up throughout the life of this five liter. I think the biggest thing that sets this engine apart in terms of reliability is when we start to look at the competition, uh, looking at Ram, the 5.7 Hemi, pretty well known that there are potentially lifter failures with that engine. GM, same thing in the same boat, if not even worse. Um, GM is also dealing with direct injection issues, which this engine does not really have to deal with because it's a dual injection setup, um, pretty much preventing a lot of the negative consequences of direct injection. Now the EcoBoost engines, you have turbos to worry about. Same with the 2.7 liter Turbo Max from GM. There's nothing wrong with turbos. They've been on diesel engines forever, but I think when you put them onto a higher revving gasoline engine, there is much more risk of them failing versus on a traditional diesel engine. Now the three liter Duramax, which I actually really, really like as an engine, but it is a modern diesel engine, which comes with an emission system. The five liter does not. And to be honest, I think a modern diesel engine is just in a category all on its own. Now these engines are still suffering from cam phaser failures, just like the EcoBoost. And it is a little frustrating, disappointing that Ford has not got to the bottom of this yet. Um, however, Cam phaser failures are not necessarily catastrophic and I would much, much, much rather have one of those fail than let's say a lifter failure or a turbo failure. The other hot button issue with this five liter is oil consumption and I think that was a very real issue. Um, however, in 2021, Ford says they have resolved the problem. It seems like the 2018 to 2020 engines were the worst um, oil consumption engines. Now, one thing that does concern me about this five liter is in 2021 with the introduction of the fourth gen Coyote engine in these trucks, Ford implemented cylinder deactivation technology. And in Ford's defense, it was not them who wanted to put this in. In order for this engine to meet government regulations, Ford was basically forced to implement cylinder, de cylinder deactivation technology, which is just really unfortunate because we've seen what's happening to GM. Um, having massive lifter issues, potentially causing lifter issues in the 5.7 Hemi. So it would just be a shame to see that happen in this engine as well. 
Um, so far, so good, only time will tell, but we'll talk more about that later in the video. So I wanna make it clear this is not the perfect golden ticket engine because it is not. Um, but looking across the board, I think this engine gives you a really good chance at good reliability and good longevity. And the common issues that this engine does face are much more inviting than some issues that other engines are facing in the 1500 segment. Another really important factor in pickup trucks is having a nice powerful engine up front. And well, this thing packs a punch. Don't let the five liters of displacement fool you. This thing is packing 400 horsepower, 410 pound feet of torque, which is more than the 5.7 Hemi, as well as the 5.3 liter from GM. This engine was literally designed to compete with the 6.4 liter Hemi, as well as the 6.2 liter LS engine from GM back in 2011. Now, obviously this engine is lacking displacement, but what Ford did is increase the top end power by giving this thing dual overhead cams and the ability for this engine to rev much higher than those bigger displacement V8s. This thing makes its peak horsepower at 6,000 RPM and can also rev up to 7,500 RPM in the Mustangs, at least 7,000 RPM in the pickup trucks, which is pretty high for a standard um, crank V8. Yeah, she pulls pretty hard up in the uh, the high RPM band there, kids. Now, what I mean, this thing has some power. She just snaps you back. And it does sound fantastic. You gotta love it. Now, I, I hear what you're saying. This is a pickup truck. Who cares about that top end power and performance? You want that low end grunt and I agree with you. So what Ford did, because they also agree with us, come on, um, they put a shorter lift uh, profile camshaft in there to try and you know bulk up that low end power as well as utilizing in combination of advancing the timing with those cam phasers to hopefully really kind of hone in some good low end power. I still think between like 1500 and 3000 RPM, this engine is a little bit lackluster. And I truly thought this would hurt this engine when it comes to towing, not having that low end power. As it turns out, not so much. And we'll talk more about that later in the video. Now, the third reason why I really like this five liter comes down to fuel economy. And I know some people think if you're gonna buy a pickup truck and you're worried about fuel economy, you shouldn't be buying a pickup truck. And I don't necessarily disagree, but it is 2023 and the price of fuel is pretty darn high these days. So I would say most people probably take fuel economy into some real consideration when buying a pickup truck. And this five liter V8 is pretty darn efficient. Now the EPA officially rates this truck at 20 miles per gallon, both combined city and high, which is actually pretty impressive. I think it is a bigger determining factor about people buying certain engines is indeed fuel economy in these 1500 pickup trucks. Now last week I towed with the 6.2 liter from GM and um, fantastic pulling engine, great performance. But in terms of having to like, daily drive an engine like that, it's gonna cost you a lot of money in fuel. It's a thirsty engine. And this engine, although not as powerful, still very much in the same realm, but it's going to be a much better daily driving engine in terms of fuel economy. And it's gonna be better than the 5.3 liter from GM as well. Also better than the 5.7 liter Hemi. And I would argue at times probably a better, more fuel efficient engine than the 3.5 liter EcoBoost. In fact, the 3.5 liter EcoBoost engine is actually the least efficient engine I've actually towed with. This five liter on the other hand was actually the most efficient engine I've ever towed with besides the V6 Pentastar in the Ram 1500. So anytime you put a load on that EcoBoost, those turbos are gonna spool up and it's gonna force more air into the engine, which needs to be met with more fuel. Um, so with this five liter, you're gonna get just much more consistent fuel economy, whether you're feather foot in this engine or if you're towing 10,000 pounds. Now I put my money where my mouth is and uh, I drove about hundred kilometers on the highway today with this engine. And uh, I got a fuel economy rating of about 11.4 liters per hundred kilometers. There you go. 
And the beauty of all that is you still have a 400 horsepower engine that'll rev to 7,000 RPM, and it's a pretty nice combo to have. The fourth reason why I really like this five liter is towing. And to me, this is where the rubber meets the road. This is what separates a good pickup truck engine from another in terms of performance is the ability to tow and tow very well. And this five liter actually surprised me. Like I mentioned earlier, low end torque out of this engine is where it struggles a little bit. And I thought this would be the real chink in its armor, but to my surprise, this is the one of the top three engines I've towed with on my towing loop in the 1500 segment. The 3.5 liter EcoBoost is currently the king daddy topper um, of my towing loop. But this five liter is not that far behind in terms of acceleration when pulling 8,000 pounds, getting up to 70 miles an hour. This thing is the second fastest engine only behind the EcoBoost. All right, boom, to the floor. Right to 7,000 RPM, woo! Boost. In terms of towing the biggest hill on my towing course, this five liter only had to rev to 3000 RPM, which is the second lowest revs we've seen. Every other V8, every other engine besides the EcoBoost has had to rev higher, downshift lower um, than this engine. So up we go the hill, let's see. All right, sixth gear. 3100 RPM. Wow, she seems like she's gonna stay in gear here. Something that I was really not expecting. I didn't think this thing would be as good of a towing engine as it was. Now the cherry on top of that towing test was that this EcoBoot, now the cherry on top for that towing test was that this five liter was vastly more fuel efficient than the EcoBoost, as well as more fuel efficient than any other V8 I've tested. Again, just pretty impressive. Now, where this five liter does fall short in terms of towing is kind of going from stoplight to stoplight, getting the load moving. This thing is five liters of displacement, um, so it's just not naturally gonna have that nice low end grunt that that 6.2 liter had that I towed last week. And that's why I rated the 6.2 liter slightly higher than this five liter because I felt that 6.2 liter just was much better at getting that, that load moving right off the line where this thing struggles a little bit um, getting that load moving right away. But once she's moving, once you get higher up in that RPM band, this thing pulls incredibly well. Now the fifth reason why I really like this five liter, and there may be a little bit of bias here, but this five liter is built in Windsor, Ontario. And I've talked about this before. Windsor, Ontario, the people of Windsor, they take great, great pride in their automotive industry. In fact, Windsor is right across the river from Detroit. Um, so Windsor has a great automotive uh, community and there's just a bunch of hardworking people in Windsor. And I take some really good pride knowing that this engine was built um, not far from where I grew up. And I just, I really, really like that. So that's the fifth reason, maybe a little bit of bias there, but the fact that this engine is made in Canada and it's just a really good quality engine, I love it. So that is my opinion, guys. I look forward to hearing all your comments and discussing with you guys in the comments as to why I'm wrong. <laughs> um, but um, yeah, no, I, I think the five liter is a very solid engine. And in my opinion, it is probably the number one engine at this point, if I was gonna be looking for a 1500. But again, look forward to your comments down below. Um, <laughs> I also really do like the three liter Duramax, but as I mentioned earlier in the video, it is a modern diesel engine and you get an emission system with that. GM has seemingly done a very good job, made it a much more reliable system than previous modern diesel engines like the Eco Diesel. Um, but as a diesel mechanic myself, I work on emission systems daily and it's always in the back of my mind, they just can be very problematic. So. That's why I would say the five liter is a better engine in terms of what I would be looking for. But nonetheless, I still really do like the three liter Duramax. I hope you liked the video. If you did, don't forget to leave that thumbs up. And if you like cool stuff like this, if you're excited to be towing with that new trailer I bought, why don't you hit that subscribe button? We'd love to have you. Anyways, guys, I'm gonna go home. I'm gonna go drink a beer and uh, we'll see you on the next freaking video.